Today is the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. Two different individuals, two individuals whose call was quite, quite different. One who had been with Jesus all through his life from the beginning of his ministry, another who never knew the historical Jesus, but only met the risen Christ. One who was one of the closest to Jesus, and yet who denied him three times. Another who persecuted the followers of the way and the followers of Jesus and became, after his conversion, one of the most ardent followers of the Lord. What does the feast of these two buried individuals say to us? It says that our God is a God of openness. Our God is a God of forgiveness. Our God is a God of inclusiveness. Our God is a God who calls every single one despite their failures, despite their sin, despite their inadequacies to a life that is wholesome, to a life that is full. In the case of Peter, he really was close. His bravado at the Last Supper when he said to the Lord, even if all should forsake you, I will not forsake you, did not stand him in good stead when he was asked the questions whether he knew the Lord and he said, I do not. Paul, on the other hand, who had never met the historical Jesus, Paul, on the other hand, who had persecuted the followers of the way, was met by the Lord on the road to Damascus, where he was going to persecute even more Christians. Having been thrown down from his horse, according to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9 and chapter 22, and a variety of accounts of Paul himself in his letters, he met what he terms as his Lord, who transformed his life from a Pharisee to a Christian to a disciple of the Lord and a pillar indeed of the Lord's church. In the Gospel of Matthew, which is the Gospel for the Feast, Jesus speaks about Kephas or Peter or Petros being the rock on which Jesus will build his church. If Peter was one rock, Paul is certainly the other rock and it is on these two pillars, the apostle of the Jews, Peter, and the apostle of the Gentiles on whom the church is built. By placing these two apostles together, the church is giving us a message that we will be different from each other and yet profess the same Lord, that we will cater to different communities and yet believe in the same Lord. The reason is, the Lord is one. The reason is, love is universal. Peter went out and reached out in a beautiful manner to the Jewish community. Paul was given the mandate to reach the ends of the world and went out to the Gentiles to make Jesus known. Both of them, according to the Acts of the Apostles, had to go through tremendous torture, pain, imprisonment and challenges because of their faith in the Lord. But both of them persevered to the end. Both of them built this beautiful church that we have today, the church of which the foundation is Jesus and the rock of Peter and the rock of Paul. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Church, the Church is going through tremendous upheavals. There are challenges from within the Church and challenges from without. But for 2,000 years, the Church has persevered despite tremendous challenges. As a matter of fact, it is true that the Church has grown even more the, the more the challenges are. And so we need not be afraid because our God in Jesus has promised us that we will undergo persecution, we will undergo trials, we will undergo tribulations, and we will have to carry our cross. However, his presence 
is an eternal presence. His presence was with Peter when Peter carried his cross. His presence was with Paul when, when Paul underwent his trials. His presence will continue to be with us. What we need to do is we need to be faithful to our call to be those disciples who will make the Lord known. And we make the Lord known fearlessly because in love there is no fear. I wish every one of you a very happy feast of Saints Peter and Saint Paul.